the problem is that we have a crappy wireless router. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can imagine that, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, 100 megabit, rock and roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey. I'm here with Matt Kirk uh, talking about his RubyConf talk uh, in conjunction with Ninefold and Multifaceted.io. Um, so, Matt, thank you so much for giving up some of your time to chat with us today. Thank you. I'm really interested in how did you come to Ruby as a programming language and, and maybe as a community as well? Yeah, so that's really interesting because I was working in the finance industry, and at the time, they were mostly using C Sharp, uh, a lot of C++, and a lot of the things that I was using to interface with that would take a lot of time because C Sharp was just this really verbose language. And what I ended up finding myself doing was looking for a general purpose scripting language to do little things. And Ruby, for some reason, just popped it into my toolkit, and I started using it more and more. Um, I'm probably one of the few people who didn't get into Ruby through Rails. I actually started using Ruby purely for a really good text processing, CSV processing language. And that's how I got into Ruby. And after I got out of the finance community, it was I, I, I transitioned into the startup community, and focused mainly on doing Ruby development, and I didn't really know about the Ruby community, but I ended up going to the RubyConf in uh, 2009 and was kind of surprised at how diverse and interesting the community really is. So I think it was just one of those things where I was, I just kind of fell into it, <laughs> and I, I really enjoy the language, and I, I, that's, that's pretty much how I got into Ruby. Awesome. Um, speaking of enjoying the language, what is it that excites you about Ruby? Yeah, so that's it, it's it's interesting because there's a lot of things that really excite me about Ruby. One of them is the syntax itself compared to C or Java or C sharp or many other languages is so easily understandable and when you write Ruby code, a lot of the time, even if somebody isn't a Ruby programmer, they can read it and understand what's going on. And to me, that's something that's really powerful because people can understand code without having to know the machine internals or anything like that. So the syntax is really great. The other thing that's awesome about Ruby is that it seems like as a community, we tend to approach problems differently. and I mean, it's something as simple as iterating over an array in Ruby is very much like using dot each as opposed to using a for loop. And those little things and changes in how we think about things is, I think, really great about Ruby. So moving a little bit more towards RubyConf, uh, which is coming ever closer. Um, <laughs> What, what was it that inspired your talk? What inspired talking about uh, test-driven neural networks for Ruby? <laughs> so a lot of my work has to do with analyzing data, using machine learning, or any type of these mathematical type problems. And the thing that I ran into more, more often was machine learning and data science for the most part usually means very hacky code and a lot of the people I was working with they would just hack around a solution until it worked and then check it in and then go home and to me the whole t idea of test driven development is actually really well suited for machine learning problems big sticky data problems because it's so similar to how we approach anything like the scientific method. So it's it's very much like you write your assumptions down, you test those assumptions, and then you continue on and on. So that's kind of what inspired the whole talk. So more or less this idea of approaching it from writing your assumptions down first, whether it be how much error you're OK with in a model or how you want it to perform or how fast you want it to perform. So it's 
it's really about writing down your assumptions first and then testing. And what is it that you want want people to walk away with when they when they walk out of your talk at the end? What do you want them to take with them? Data, this idea of data science, big data, all that stuff is a little bit confusing to a lot of people, and it doesn't need to be. I think it's actually a lot more doable than people realize. So to me, success in the talk would mean somebody walking out of there with excitement about approaching these problems because they're, they're really important for what we do, uh, using the data for some sort of interesting purpose. And that's, that's really what I'm trying to, to point out is that Ruby is perfectly good language to do this stuff in. Cool. And I don't, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the, uh, uh, the talk schedule and, and, you know, it's a three-track conference. Are there, comp are there talks that you're really excited to see yourself? Yeah, so I think, oh boy, so th there's actually one talk that I saw already, which uh, it was at a Cascadia Conf, and it was done by uh, Jerry D'Antonio, I think it's D'Antonio. Anyways, it's all about concurrency, and even though I already saw the talk, I really want to see it again, because it's, it's a very important thing to Ruby, considering that we have the GIL, the Global Interpreter Lock in Ruby, to be talking about concurrency. Mm. Without it, we won't be able to process nearly enough information, and we're not utilizing, you know, eight core machines the way we should. I think that's a really exciting thing. There's a lot of other really good, you know, best practices talks, which I think are always fun to see. I think the other one that I really want to see is the, the recommendation engines uh, done by Evan Light. I've yeah. seen him talk before, and he's a really good speaker. So I haven't seen this talk, so I'm, I'm really excited about that one. Cool. But yeah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, thank you. Your afternoon. We'll see you in Miami. All right. Cool. See you. Thanks a lot. Bye.